Hey everybody, Lewis here, Bar Shack Barbecue and other things. Well, today we're out in the shop because it's winter time and uh, got a couple pieces of product that uh, I purchased and I want to show you them all. And we're going to actually use these here. Sorry, my dogs want out. Quincy, no. Anyway, got a couple pieces of product here that I per recently purchased and I want to get using them, so I thought I would show you what I got. The first thing I bought was the Ribolator for the Weber kettle. It can also be used on the Weber, uh, Weber Smoky Mountains. This is the 22 and a half inch variety, and it can also be used on a gasser too if you have that set up correctly. We'll get in and look at this in a minute, of what all it has, but I'm pretty excited to use this. So this is the uh, box for the Ribolator. You can see how it kind of sits on there. You gotta have a rotisserie ring. Let's go ahead and open it up here. Sorry about the dogs. So, got a couple of uh, brochures on it. The Liberator can do more than you think. And Got the uh, cook, important cooking tips for the Ribolator. All right. So here are the trays. And as you can see, they are actually expandable. So you can make them whatever length you need to. Uh, there's four of them in here. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so what do you need for the Ribolator to make it work on a 22 and a half inch kettle? You need a rotisserie ring. So I got a rotisserie ring. Now this one is a brand called Only Fire. And uh, I got the black one or the steel one. So let's take it out here Ooh, without dropping it. So it's all in a bag here. Watch this. Didn't know I knew karate, did you? <laughs> all right. Just plug this in and see what she does. Nice long cord on here too, that's sharp. It's nice. Give her some power. All right, so we're plugged in. Let's turn it on. Oh wow, look at that. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Oh man, I can't wait to get this set up. Let's get in there. Sorry for any shaking, but I want to show you how it's all running. Look, and let's put a lid on. See how the lid fits. Oh yeah, it's still spinning. What I have here are two racks of spare ribs. And the issue we have is here is our uh, rotisserie rack. And we gotta fit this spare rib onto this rack. 
So what you do is you kind of line it up here how you think you're going to want it, like this. I've got it flush to this edge and flush to this edge. Um, this is where the bigger bones are and the main bones are down here. So what you want to do is you just want to take a knife and all I'm going to do is kind of try to score the meat here right where I want to cut it down. Same way on this side. Something like that. So we'll remove this and let's see what we can do here. So we're just coming in with a good sharp knife and we're just trimming this down. Something like that. Now we're going to cook this piece too, so uh, don't you worry. No meat is wasted here. And we'll come in and we'll cut this down. Like that. So now our rack of ribs looks more like a baby back rack. Kind of squared up. Then we have our and what I did is I made a mark here where I need to have that sitting at, basically. So let's see how this will fit in here. So something like that. Perfect. We'll do that to the other rack, too, so that we have both the same size. And we'll put this on a separate rack. Okay, I am using a mustard binder, and for both these racks, I'm going to come in with a little bit of It's Incredible from Heaven Made Products as my base layer here. Uh, it's basically mainly salt, pepper, and garlic with a few other seasonings in it. So we get a nice base layer with that. Oh, this is Tuffy Stone. This is Tuffy Stone's rub. So we're going to come in and we're going to put that on this one. He's won a couple of championships with his ribs and other things. This other rack, my buddy over at GT's Barbecue and Cuisine gave me some rub that he got from a friend and he said, you gotta try this. Um, so I'm gonna try it on this back rack. We'll probably try it on the trim ends too. So I do like to put some on the the underside or the bone side. Let's give it a quick little pat down. Like so. Alright. Flip them over. And we'll repeat the process for this side. Got a nice coating on both of them. Okay, for this rotisserie cook, I'm gonna be using Weber brand uh, briquettes. And what you're gonna see here is I've got two zones set up on each side. I got a fire starter in the center there. Uh, we're gonna get this lit and we'll let the coals come up to temp and then we'll put some in each side and then we'll put our rotisserie on and uh, then we'll put our ribs on. So let's get this lit. Okay, so we'll give it a few minutes here to come up to temp, and we'll get those ribs on here. I am running out of 
one in my eye grill, uh, just hanging it over so I have an idea of what the temperature of the uh, pit is while it's going. So uh, we'll let it go for a couple hours and come out and check them. been on long enough it's time to wrap let's take a look Okay, so been on for about an hour and a half since we wrapped them. Let's go ahead and uh, open them up and uh, we'll just probe them for tenderness here. So switch around. Here's our two racks of ribs. I just put a light coating of barbecue sauce on them. Let's cut into them and see what we got. Nice color to it. Looks really good. Mmm. Alright, let's cut into this other one, see what we got. Trying to find the uh, bone here. So this one's a little more done. You can see it. Mm. It's falling apart. Let's sample it. All right, let's give this first one a taste. Here. Mm. Wow. That's really good. Mm. See nice clean bone. Mm. This comes right off. <laughs> There's pretty good seasoning on there too. That's not bad. Um, that one has a little more salty flavor to it. So I think that's the uh, one that uh, Gary over at GT's Barbecue and Cuisine, the um, rub that he provided to me. It's pretty well salty, um, but definitely has a lot of flavor to it. That's good. All right, let's try the other one. Let's see what it tastes like. That's good. Mm. Once again, just fall off the bone. That's pretty good. Okay. 
So you saw how I did that with the Ribolator and the new um, Only Fire rotisserie ring. Um, I really like that rotisserie ring. I uh, thought I was gonna order the uh, stainless steel model. Um, it's like maybe $10 more than the uh, black coated steel one. Um, but obviously when I checked out on the cart, I had the black one in her. That was my fault, not the, not only fires uh, um, checkout part. It, I selected the wrong one. But I saved $10 and it works just fine. Um, then I went over to Seattle and met Bob, who is the creator of the Ribolator. And uh, I bought a set of the uh, uh, racks and the uh, rotisserie attachment. Um, so that's, uh, got that from him. So I saved on, uh, you know, shipping. Um, so I think uh, the uh, Ribolator, I'll have a link to his uh, website so you can check it out. Um, you can find the only grill, or I'm sorry, the only fire um, rotisserie ring on eBay or Amazon. Um, and they're good products. It fits on there pretty good. Uh, so I'm happy with both of those. The ribs are really good. Uh, perfectly cooked. Might be overdone a little bit. Um, for what I like, I like a nice bite, uh, but they will uh, definitely eat well. And uh, those uh, end cuts, uh, the trimmings, that's gonna be really good too. So um, I'm very happy with the products. A couple little mods I'm gonna do um, to kind of make them run better. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, using this more often and uh, seeing what it does. So, as I always say, you can do this too. Thank you for watching. Grill on, my friends. Till next time. We're gonna eat now. <laughs>